Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Tuesday, February 4th, 2014. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. Is 2014 the year the economy finally crashes, crumbling the matrix reality we live in? And we get a glimpse into what a militarized police state looks like. And NASA seeks corporate funding to send a robot to the moon in search of new corporate ventures. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, we move from one televised terror threat to another. This week, it's going to be all eyes on the Winter Olympics. Now the International Crisis Group is predicting a terror attack to take place in Sochi during the Winter Olympics. Russian authorities, of course, believe that the threat may come from the Muslim North Caucasus, which is where an insurgency is currently underway. And, of course, that's where Prince Bandar bin Sultan of Saudi Arabia threatened to move his rebels in if Putin didn't play ball. But no. This threat is now coming from the IGC. They believe that the threats against the games are going to arise elsewhere, saying radicals can come from any region of Russia. Now, the reason why this should cause some concern is that the IGC is a non-government organization founded by members of the internationalist Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and the World Bank, as if those two go together. Now, it's funded by governments and corporate foundations. Its advisory board is dominated by Chevron, Shell, and other transnational corporations. But George Soros sits on the IGC board of trustees. Of course, he's directly implicated in funding the pro-EU activists in the Ukraine during that current uprising. Now, so here we have George Soros. He's a man whose company rolled out the naked body scanners almost immediately following that false flag terror threat with the underwear bomber. Now all of a sudden he's curiously there where another terror attack is supposed to take place, probably salivating with the thought of the potential profits that can be made there. And basically these are the same groups who are sending in rebels to destabilize other regions and other areas, much like Saudi Arabia has threatened to do to Putin during the Olympic Games. So we have all these globalists are kind of salivating here, wondering how they can go ahead, destabilize the region, make a big problem, and then sweep in to clean it up. Maybe Soros is hoping that Russia is going to hope to, you know, purchase all the naked body scanners that aren't working for us here in America. But who knows? I mean, that's what these globalists do. And historically, they create the problem, and then they want to go in and fix it. So. Are they predicting a terror threat that they're going to create? Now, that's something I'd bet money on. But you know what? Just don't worry about it. Everything is fine. But there is a Harvard economist that disagrees with that. He just took a million dollars out of Bank of America, and he said he's probably going to go ahead and create a bank run on Bank of America because of that. Now, this is a Burnham. He's an ardent critic of the Fed. He writes, why do I risk starting a run on Bank of America by withdrawing my money and presuming that many fellow depositors will read this and rush to withdraw too? Because they pay me zero interest. Now Burnham explains that Bank of America may be unwilling or unable to return his money should one of a number of different circumstances arise, such as depositors demanding their money back en masse, or if the investments of which 90% of depositors' money Bank of America has loaned out to cover go bust. So, I mean, here's this guy, he's got a million dollars in the bank, and basically it'd be better off if he just stuck that money in under his bed in a mattress, because when he goes to take it out, the bank will put these capital controls on it and say, I'm sorry, we need that to cover these risky investments that we made with your money that we pay you zero interest on. Silly American, what were you thinking? But in addition, he points out that the FDIC, which everyone feels so secure, you know, putting their money in the bank because they guarantee to insure deposits up to $250,000. He points out the FDIC only has about $41 billion in reserve against $6 trillion in insured deposits. So, I mean, you can do the math there. Now, this Harvard economist, he pins the blame on the government intervention and specifically Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve for pursuing absurd quantitative easing policies. He says it's going to unravel in the U.S. as it has every other time it has been tried from Weimar Germany to Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe. 
Now, another elite insider also agrees with Burnham. He was one who predicted the massive economic crash in 2012. He says now that there's a very large probability that the real end of the world scenario might come March 4th, 2014. He says the doomsday clock will ring then because the U.S. economy may fully crash around that date, which will in turn bring down all world economies and all hope of any recovery for the foreseeable future. Now, he predicts that interest rates will skyrocket, businesses will fail, unemployment will go to record levels, of course, material and food shortages, and major social unrest. Now, he goes on to say that any wishful thinking that America is in a recovery and that things are getting better is an illusion because a run on the bank would start suddenly, but it would snowball, build very quickly, and the rest of the world would fully crash along with us. Now, this collapse is also noted by the U.S. Treasury Department, who agrees, and they say that if the U.S. government doesn't raise the debt ceiling— it's going to have a generational effect, meaning that a depressive economic environment could last for our entire lifetimes, which is very frightening. Now, who knows if it's going to happen around March 4th or whenever, but all I can say is that there are some major economists and the U.S. Treasury, I don't really believe anything they say, but some other major economists are saying we need to be prepared for this. Something is happening. And if Burnham's words don't send a chill down your spine, they definitely should send a chill through the markets. We have seen the Dow Jones fall a thousand points. And this has been since the, its height in December, which we haven't seen it fall more than 200 points uh, in over a year. I mean, that's its moving average. So many believe that this is just the beginning of a major stock decline. Now, Peter Schiff says the crisis is imminent. I don't think Obama is going to finish his second term without the bottom dropping out. A stock market, there, the investors there are oblivious to these problems, and the global financial markets are also becoming extremely unstable. Now, for anyone who doesn't believe that we could see civil unrest here in America, like what these economists are talking about, just take a look at what happened in Seattle. People there were lighting things on fire, burning historical buildings, damaging buildings, throwing down street signs, going crazy because their team won the Super Bowl. I mean, they were acting crazy because of good news. Now, imagine what they would do, how the average American would behave if there was a total economic collapse and no one could find any jobs or any income for an extended period of time. So that's, I mean, that's how you can imagine some civil unrest. And then, of course, just wait till the financial reality of the Affordable Care Act sets in. And then once the employer mandate kicks in, I mean, we've had a year, they've had a year of kind of saving grace for that. But Obamacare actually gives business owners incentive to cut hours and turn full-time workers into part-time workers. And we've already seen evidence of that happening, people's jobs turning into part-time jobs. And then for other people out there who are already unemployed, it really does not make sense for them to go and get a job because there are so many uh, government subsidies that they can go out and get that it doesn't make sense for them to go get a minimum wage job or some crappy job when they can just get free stuff from the government. It actually is free health care when you don't have a job, which, of course, you know, we used to call that Medicaid, but I don't think that it got enough tax revenue. But obviously our government cannot sustain that many people living off of it and needing it to be their everything and their all. So I don't know why they are trying to create that, of course, without our economy producing anything. So it really, it's going to be a bizarre scenario. Just look at Spain, where 4.8 million people there are without a job. The suicide rates there are the highest they have been in eight years. So we can expect to see those sudden suicide rates climbing here in the U.S. as well, as it's predicted that two and a half million more Americans are going to be without a job in the coming decade, thanks to Obamacare. So do you think that Obama really cares about those climbing suicide rates? Uh, that suicide has emerged as the leading cause of death amongst young men in Spain because their um, unemployment average is about 57%. No, he doesn't care about that. And in fact, his stocks will probably go up because he's helping the globalists with their depopulation agenda. So this crash is happening all around us. They're just hoping to convince you to stay on their government health care and eat their GMOs and 
maybe you'll just off yourself at some point. They really don't care. They really do not care about you. And hopefully in the meantime, you'll just stay distracted with their mass distraction games. This week, it's going to be the Olympics. Last week, it was the Super Bowl and all the weeks and months leading up to the Super Bowl. Of course, the place, the Super Bowl, where the Illuminati globalist symbolism is constantly on display for everyone who knows anything to see and for the sheep to just be hypnotized with this symbolism. Now they've got their MVPs falling in line, hoping to make the occult symbolism trendy and cool. Their Super Bowl MVP, Malcolm Smith, gave a press conference while he was wearing a Nike shirt that was emblazoned with the all-seeing eye and the occult Ouroboros symbol. Now, Obviously, Malcolm Smith has no idea what's going on. That was quite evident by his response when Matthew Mills blitzed his press conference, his post-game press conference. He was just like, oh, is everyone okay? Uh, no, they're not okay, idiot, because people are distracted by guys like you who have no idea what's going on, and they just allow the puppet masters to pull their strings while they destroy the world. Thanks, buddy. Woo, USA. Look at all. If those people in that stadium right there would just say, we demand GMO labeling, or we want to impeach Obama for his crimes, or vote, just go vote. No. Instead, they just want to get drunk and cheer on these losers, idiot morons who have no idea what's going on and how they are helping to mass hypnotize the world. It's its pretty insane. So, you know, what else I think is quite bizarre is that that guy, you know, he doesn't have anything. He, he just wears the clothes because he thinks they're cool. Because Jay-Z's clothing line is like, you know, this occult symbolism is cool. Everyone thinks I'm a part of the Illuminati, so I'll just mess with them and make these clothes and use this symbolism. When historically, hip-hop and the hip-hop genre, hip-hop heads, they've been the only group of people, in music especially, who have actually question the Illuminati and who have said, oh, that, that's Illuminati, that's this, there's a secret cobble of people ruling this society and this music industry and the entertainment industry. They were like the most vocal group asking questions and now it seems to be the hip hop genre who is adopting these <laughs> symbols into their clothing. So it's like you've been infiltrated, guys, like you were the only ones asking questions and now you are worshiping, worshiping them, paying money, paying money to put their symbols on your clothes. So that is completely bizarre. That's really bizarre. So meanwhile, while all this is going on and everyone's distracted, America is being turned into a police state. We, every week, there's another story after the other. I mean, we have the Boston bombing debacle and the total failure of Super Bowl security, that was all just the beginning. Like, even though it didn't work, it's just set up to scare and police and patrol and the, control the average American. They're going to be everywhere. Bumbling, Barney, Fife, idiot, moron cops are going to be busting down your door just like they did to this family in Iowa. Armed militarized police smashed their way into the home of an innocent family last week when they discovered that they were being filmed on home security cameras. One officer ripped a camera right off the wall while another covered up a security camera, a second one to prevent their raid from being documented. So why did they use this force to smash into someone's home without using the knock and announce required by law, mind you, they just busted in? Well, police carried out the raid in search of someone they suspected of using stolen credit cards to buy clothes and electronics. So this is what a militarized police state in America looks like. Any kind of felony, which is, is gonna be responded to with armed raids, and then they're gonna shoot another person or, or kill your pet. I mean, luckily the dog in that video wasn't shot on camera, that would have been awful, but it's not something that we haven't seen before. Of course, in the end, none of the items on the warrant were found, so the police had to make some kind of arrest and make their whole mission look legit. They got one guy on a probation violation, the other guy had...